Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Well, today we're going to see how Queen Elizabeth, who was then Princess Elizabeth, did during World War II. She really stepped up in her patriotism for her country. So World War II was a scary time for the world. And in England, they found some scary times on September 13, 1940. Germany started to drop bombs on English cities and towns. Five high explosive bombs were dropped on Buckingham Palace. And the Royal Chapel, Inner Quadrangle, and Palace Gates were hit, and several workmen were injured. Rather than flee the city under attack, King George VI and his wife, Queen Elizabeth, remained at Buckingham Palace in solidarity with those living through the Blitz. Well, Queen Elizabeth was 13 years old at this time, and her and her sister Margaret were sent to Windsor 20 miles away for their safety. But they weren't the only ones. Millions of kids were also sent out into the country, and also the government's Children's Overseas Reception Board evacuated over 2,600 children to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the United States. It was during this uh, time of separation that I Elizabeth gave her first speech. Uh, Winston Churchill had asked her to do it. Uh, he wanted to boost the morale of young people, according to People.com. The speech was very sympathetic of the children's situations, and she gave this speech on October 13, 1940. In part, she said, Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. My sister Margaret Rose and I feel so much for you, as we know from experience what it means to be away from those you love most of all. To you living in new surroundings, we send a message of true sympathy, and at the same time, we would like to thank the kind people who have welcomed you to their homes and the country. Well, Elizabeth's father was kind of reluctant to have his daughter make this speech, thinking that it might put some stress on her, because he had these moments of stress when he first started making uh, public speeches. He had become king suddenly when his brother abdicated the throne, and most people didn't realize, but he had a stuttering problem. So he ended up calling calling up Lionel Logue, a speech therapist, to help him overcome it. And there's a great movie called The King's Speech that shows how they became friends and all the stress that occurred during their therapy sessions and how he eventually overcame the stuttering issue. But he needn't have doubted Elizabeth because she was a natural According to People.com, the king, Elizabeth's dad, rushed into the room after the first rehearsal, saying she's exactly like her, meaning that the prince's voice was extraordinarily like that of her mother, the queen. And then he said, and everyone knows how excellently uh, the queen broadcasts. Well, Princess Elizabeth didn't stop with just giving a speech. In 1943, she was part of the Dig for Victory, according to National www.musemum.org war. People were urged to use gardens and every spare space of land to grow vegetables to help combat food shortages. Before the Second World War, Britain had relied on food imports from across the world, but when the war started, shipping was threatened by the enemy submarines and warships. This resulted in food shortages and led to a rationing of foods such as meat, butter, cheese, eggs, and sugar. And on the morning of her 16th birthday, Princess Elizabeth undertook her first inspection of a military regiment during a parade at Windsor Castle. She had been given the role of Honorary Colonel of the Grenadier Guards, which symbolized her military involvement in the war effort. It appears that even in her younger years, Elizabeth uh, wanted to help her country and not be singled out because of her royal status. When she turned 18 in the year 1944, she insisted on joining the Auxiliary Territorial Service, uh, abbreviated ATS, and this was a women's branch of the British Army. Uh, women under 30 had to either join the military, work in industry, or work on the land. When Elizabeth joined the Army, her father made sure she wasn't given any special rank. She started as a second subaltern in the ATS and was later promoted to junior commander, and that's the equivalent of captain. So there were numerous jobs she could have trained for, such as cooks, telephonists, drivers, postal workers, searchlight operators, and ammunition inspectors. And some of the women served as part of an anti-aircraft unit, although they were not allowed to fire the guns. The jobs were dangerous, and during the course of the war, 335 ATS women were killed 
and many more injured, and by June 1945, there were around 200,000 members of the ATS from across the British Empire serving on the home front and many overseas theaters of war who wanted to learn how to be a mechanic. In a six-week training course, he passed the military driving test, learned to read maps, and worked repairing engines, according to a Time magazine article. And the newspaper started calling her Princess Auto Mechanic. <laughs> so during the training, she was very close to Windsor Castle, so she was allowed to go there and sleep at night. And the king and the queen and Princess Margaret visited Princess Elizabeth at the Mechanical Transport Training Section uh, in Camberley, Surrey, and watched her learn about engine maintenance. And that was endearing and shows how close a family they were. They were proud of her, no doubt. May the 5th, 1945, the war ended in London and thousands of people took to the streets to celebrate, flooding Trafalgar Square and the mall leading up to Buckingham Palace where the king and queen greeted them from the balcony. When it became nightfall and the celebration was continuing, Princess Elizabeth put on her uniform and her and her sister Margaret went out into the crowd. In 1985, the now queen, uh, had spoken to the BBC about how she tried to avoid being spotted. I remember we were terrified of being recognized, so I pulled my uniform cap well down over my eyes. She described the lines of unknown people linking arms and walking down Whitehall, and all of us were swept along by tides of happiness and relief. There were even reports that the princesses joined a conga dance through the Ritz Hotel as they celebrated with the crowds. I think that was one of the most memorable nights of my life. Elizabeth recall. Queen Elizabeth was a colonel-in-chief of 16 British Army regiments and corps and many Commonwealth units. As a member of the ATS, she was the first female of the royal family to be an active duty member of the British Armed Services. The Queen was also the last surviving head of state to have served during the Second World War. In her 90s, she's often pictured behind the wheel and had been known to diagnose and repair faulty engines, just as she was taught to do so during her wartime service in the ATS. I guess you never forget your training. According to Haggerty.com, the Queen never had to hold a passport or a driver's license, yet enjoyed driving and was known for being prudent with cars and the royal household, keeping them on the road as long as possible before changing for a newer model. Queen Elizabeth showed she was destined to be on the throne even in her younger years. She amazed her father with her speaking abilities while doing a national broadcast to keep the younger generation and the UK spirits up while they had to be se separated from their parents during the war. When Elizabeth was a little older, she began to work in the campaign growing vegetables for the country as the country could no longer import things they needed. She really showed her patriotism for her country when she joined the women's military and she was the first in the royal family to do so. Her parents were too excited about her doing that and they waited a year before giving their permission. She did her job well while in the military. Once she took the throne after her father's death, she performed outstandingly there too. She took her job seriously and never stopped serving her country, and she continued to serve her country till the end of her life. That kind of dedication is rare, especially today. Thank you, Queen Elizabeth. I hope that everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, that would be good too. And there's a notification bell, and if you click on that, you'll be notified when a new video comes out. So I hope everybody's been having a good day, and tune in again soon for another episode of Queen Elizabeth, A Day in Her Life. Thank you. Bye.